How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Let's Make a Game 2018. We're working on Natural Explorers. Let's take a look at some of the comments we've got. Josh Gonzalez suggests that we build dams to generate electricity for city upgrades. Werewolf would like to have enemies attack our cities and mines. We might do something like that if we get a good combat system going. Buying land and expanding the cities. That's a decent suggestion. Blue Rabbit had an interesting idea of creating a policy system that will toggle between resources and habits happiness, kind of like how Spore works, but he also suggested that we make a progress bar for like happiness. From that comment, I got the idea of a progress bar in between how long it takes before the next payout. So instead of just you wait 10 seconds and you hear a sound effect, we might be able to do some sort of animation that constantly switches between frames. But one of the most interesting comments that Blue Rabbit has left us is a resource collection limit it incorporates some sort of anti-AFK method so the player couldn't just start the game and then AFK for eight hours and come back and then they're super rich and the game is no longer a challenge. So I definitely want to have some sort of resource collection limit and that would require the player to go from location to location every so many minutes just to stop the player from just AFKing and maxing their stuff. Devin Scott's chiming in with a village building system idea, which I do like the idea of building a village or upgrading a city depending on who you recruit in the city or what buildings you put in the city. It affects your monthly, yearly tax dollar or whatever your resource accumulation. It's a really good idea that I think we'll have to mess around with. Maybe have a exploration map for the town themselves. There's several ways we can go about making a village building system. I don't want to go too complex. I do like this idea. Different lands for different resources. That's a great idea. You can give the player incentive to go to the bottom right corner of the map. There's a resource that you can only get there or the top right or the bottom left corner of the map. There's a specific resource on an island down there that you can only get in that part of the map. I do like this idea. Great stuff, Devin Scott. Keep it coming. She Sleepy is sleepy, says multiple islands available after building a boat. Of course, we're going to do something like that. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for the comments. Very, very good feedback. Keep the comments coming, and I will add your name and your ideas to the text log, if unless the idea has already been suggested. In which case, it will just fortify the idea that that should be in the game, because multiple people are asking for it. All right, I would like to add a message using Gab Window instead of just or on top of just having an icon balloon pop up when we get a resource for the cave since we're not using a sound cue which we might actually add some i'm not sure how it's going to be when we have many resource gathering things they're just going to be sound effects going crazy so maybe if we do add sound effects we'll have a toggle in the options that the player can decide if what they want to hear and we'll have a conditional branch inside the events that says if the switch is on then play the sound effect otherwise don't so it's very easy to add the option to turn off sound effects for specific things i would like to add the gab window and make a gab pop up when we get a resource from a mine that we're off screen, we can still be notified that we got that resource. So let's do that first. We're going to jump over to yanfly.mo, press control F and type in gab. It'll jump down to the gab window. Let's get the gab window. Here's something that I do when I'm adding new plugins from Yanfly since he's got his videos set up in a specific manner every time. You can kind of scrub through the video if you've already watched it and look for where the plugin is placed. It's usually somewhere in the first to second quarter of the video. It'll show you the plugins that are on top and below of the plugin you're adding. Of course, it depends on when this plugin was released for what plugins will populate the list inside his plugin manager here. But it's good to give you a basic idea where to put the plugin. Because in the last episode, we talked about how just moving the plugins around in the plugin manager, it can change how they run. So it's important to put them in the right spot. For the most part, the plugins are listed in the order that they should be placed in your plugin manager on the slash yep page, which is very convenient. But if you scrub through the video about the first to second quarter, you can see the in the plugin manager where the plugin is actually placed. For the gab window, we know it's going to be below the status menu core, the passives, base troops, and underneath the event mini label, but above region events and region restrictions. Since I'm using event mini label and region restriction, I know that's where I can put it. I expect to have to move around my plugins constantly. In order to display correctly, we're going to use a combination of force gab, clear gab, show gab, and probably gab sound file name to have sound effects play at the same time when I'm 
I'm skimming through the help file for a plugin, often it's information overload. Sometimes I'll create a text document with just a few of the plugin commands or relative information that I'm going to be using so that I can narrow my scope and look at something specifically in the way that I'm going to use it, not in everything that it possibly can do. Let's try to put together something using these commands. That worked beautifully. So I changed the code to eliminate some redundancy as I noticed that the more things I add, the more redundancy I was going to have to create and repeat the same actions multiple times. Before I decide to add more things to each one of these conditional branches, just copy pasting more and more code, I decided to address some redundancy. I'm going to use the jump to label and a new switch in order to have a piece of code at the bottom that runs when I need it to and I can just add multiple things to this a single time instead of adding it in one of these and copy pasting, copy pasting, copy pasting. What I've done is on the rarity check here after the plugin command for the show the icon, which will be different on each one. So they'll have their own, just like the gab window will be different. So I'll have the gab window in here instead of at the label part. What I've done is created a new switch called redone. I've turned it on and I've added a jump to label that could be found on the first tab of the contents right here at the bottom, jump to label. When you insert a jump to label, it's going to ask you, what do you want to jump to? And you type in the name of the label you want. You would actually need to create a new label. You would do the same thing. You click on here on flow control, click on new label, put in a label and the name is completely arbitrary. You put in whatever you want. I typed in redone. I created a label called redone and I copy pasted the code that I had under each one of these rarity check conditional branches into there. Instead of having three copies of this, I just have one copy of it. <laughs> Looking at this event now, we control the switch turning redone on. The reason why we have to have this switch on is because a label doesn't exclude itself from the event itself. So even if you have something that's labeled, it'll run every time even though it's labeled. We need to encapsulate this label, this chunk of code, so that it only runs when we want it to run, not every frame of the game. Otherwise, you're gonna lose all your pickaxes right at the beginning. We have a switch turn on when we wanna run this chunk of code and we jump to that label. We make a conditional branch saying if this switch is on, then we label our code so we know where it jumps to. If the switch is on, it will jump to this label. It'll control a variable for the random item check like this is the same as before if we scored low enough we will lose a pickaxe and we'll control the mind timer to reset it to zero no matter what we roll this is depending on if we what we roll but no matter what we roll we're going to reset the timer once we jump to the label also turn off the switch that encapsulates the label that's going to let us do several things if we want to add more bits of code that's going to happen for each time for each thing no matter if we find ore coal or diamond we wouldn't add it in each one of these conditionals we would just add it inside the label here. Now for the gab window, it's going to be a different command for each thing. We may need to add some gab window stuff inside this label. I'm going to use the show gab inside the label, but the gab sound and file name inside of each rarity check. I'm going to use item codes inside the gab text. Ah, it works. Coal has been recovered. Ore has been recovered. <laughs> it's working. Yes. Oh, it didn't display it this time. Why not? Coal has been recovered. I wonder if there is like a delay. Ore has been, or will it not repeat the same one twice? Coal, it's alternating, so it's showing, but if it d shows coal twice, will it not show the ore? Let's see if it does ore again and it doesn't show the gap window. Coal, it's trolling me now. Ore, it's likely to show ore again. Is it going to show the gap window? Ah, come on, come on, game, patrolling me. Ore, and then diamond. <laughs> 
Or, I want to see if, it, if we get or two times in a row, will it not notify us the second time? Right. Okay. How do we fix that? See, we got coal twice, and it didn't show the second time, and I want it to. I'm going to try to use force gab instead of show gab. Maybe that will fix the problem we have when we gain the same item two times in a row. Coal or... Hey, it works! Okay, so when we force gab, it's going to show that no matter if you... We got or three times in a row and it's still showing on the gab window. That's great, fantastic. I want to add a little bit of a sound effect, but I want to create my own sound effect for it. So let's do that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is take two coffee cups, bang them together like that, and see if we can get a cool harvesting sound effect. Well, that's a good knocking sound. Okay, so we've got a few specimens to look at here. I think the cleanest looking one is this one and this one. Well, let's listen to these. Ooh, that's satisfying. What about this one? That one's good too. This one has a chunkier sound, I think. Yeah, we're gonna go with this one. So I'm gonna cut this, select everything, press delete, press control V to paste that. I'm gonna clean up this audio. So we've got that. Okay, we've created our sound effect. Beautiful. Gain, open folder, go into our audio, SE, copy our new sound effect, paste it into our SE. I'm going to rename it so that it stays next to all my other custom ones. Exclamation point DG underscore. You can use whatever naming convention you want, but you probably should use a naming convention to distinguish or from other ones. We'll add that to the label redund. And now when we harvest resources, we should hear a cup clack sound effect that we created as well as the text and the icon. We got it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's great. I love it. It's amazing. I think since we have this set up, we should probably change the sound effect that's being played from this thing into a gab, as well as show that we've got some money from our town in the gab window. There it goes. 100M has been added, and then the coal, and it puts it into a list so they don't overwrite each other. They take their time. The force gab will overwrite the, the money, I think. Yeah, that's cool. That's what I wanted to accomplish today. Obviously, there's a thousand things more I wanted to get done, but editing takes a long time, a huge part of my day. So I need to get to editing this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give this video a thumbs up. Like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel if you would like more content like this. If you like to show your appreciation for what I do here on this channel, please consider backing me on patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. That's patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. Would really appreciate your support there. And if you don't have money, but you still want to show your love, come on over to the discord server we've got a link in the description below we'd love to have you come and just talk with us chat with us we're there every day so yeah thank you guys so much for watching leave your comments in the comments below smash that like button i need to get a thousand likes come on please a thousand okay i'm being unreasonable a hundred likes can i somebody like the video please thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you in the next one Bye bye